In what may be the most contested primary this year, State Senator Lauren Book is being challenged by former Broward County Commissioner Barbara Sharif. It has become a nasty campaign, but I wanted to focus on issues, particularly guns, and what she thinks about Governor DeSantis' pledge to weaken gun laws in the state, including pushing for an open carry law, which would allow anyone to carry a gun without a permit. You know, the governor has talked about it, and the incoming Speaker of the House, quite frankly, has said that open carry will pass his chamber this legislative session. That is terrifying in so many different ways. I think it's completely tone deaf to your point, Jim Uvalde. Uh, we are living back through the horrors that was uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Uh, a di very, very dangerous, scary time. Uh, when we know law enforcement doesn't believe in open carry, it is scary to think that the leaders of our state. Um, want to bring a policy like this and are promising, quite frankly, a policy like this to the state of Florida. Uh, being the leader of the Senate Democrats, working very hard to bring back uh, candidates who care deeply about gun safety and will do anything possible to stop policies like this from moving forward in our legislature. Because we know that it won't keep our communities safe, it won't keep our schools safe, and is dangerous all the way around. And I guess in, in some ways to marry the policy part with the political part, I guess this becomes the question that Barbara Sharif, your opponent, has been raising about you is, whether or not you play too gently when it comes to the Republicans and whether or not you're able to stand up and try to truly block them from passing things. So I guess I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do you balance that line between keeping a collegial attitude with your colleagues, but yet at the same time standing up for what you believe? Well, that's a great question. Uh, my opponent talked last time she was on your show about some of the issues around it, the abortion issue. Uh, let me be very, very clear. While we and the Senate Democrats fought tooth and nail to try to stop that draconian, dangerous piece of policy uh, in the legislature, the reality is we are the minority. We do not have enough votes within the Democratic ranks to stop policies like that. Uh, we do stand up to the GOP. I do stand up to the GOP. I lost a chairmanship because of my outspoken, we talked about I was on your show after losing my chairmanship, talking about when the president wanted to pass a Texas style abortion ban here in the state of Florida. There is not a lot that we can do without the numbers in Tallahassee to stop dangerous policies like that and so many others, quite frankly, that the extremist GOP party is moving forward in our state. And that is why it is so important that we have more of us in Tallahassee come November to stop those policies. Because the reality is we're 16. We don't have enough to stop those types of policies in our state. So let me, let me just hold you there just so people understand. When you say we're 16, we're 16, your Democrats are 16 out of 40. That's you know, correct. So 16 out of 40. So Republicans have a 24 to 16 advantage. Do you, since you talked about the abortion issue, I was going to bring it up as well, and I want you to address it because there has been a number, not just from Barbara Sharif, but from others, who have questioned whether at the, in the, in the final moments of that debate, there was the question as to whether or not to make exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother. And you made the case why they needed those exceptions, why that was critical, and then it, and then it went to a voice vote and the Senate president ruled that the, that the votes were not there, that you had lost. Now, there were a lot of people who thought that you may have actually won that vote based on, based on the voice vote. It's very subjective. And the question became why you didn't insist on a roll call vote, even if you lose, just to make sure that every Republican, every Democrat is formally on record by name, by vote, as to how they stand on that issue. Why did you not ask for a roll call vote? So let's be very clear. Several times, uh, my issue, my stance. As a survivor of sexual assault, nobody wanted that exemption more than me. In fact, I introduced that amendment three separate times in the process that that bill was moving forward. First, in health policy. Second, in appropriations. Third, on the floor. We did call hands on that second stop 
in appropriations. We had several of our Republican colleagues, females, that came to me and said, we will be with you on a voice vote, but do not count for us on the board. It will not happen. They're punitive. They punish us. We're not going to be with you. Your best bet is to get it in a voice vote. Uh, as a point of strategy, my colleagues and I, my responsibility was to give the most effective, strong case to have that exemption. I'm a survivor of sexual assault. I was a survivor of a gang rape. I talked about that for the very first time on the floor of the Florida Senate, begging my colleagues to give that exemption to survivors because you just need a little bit more time. Do you, Again, do you regret, but let me ask you this, do you regret in hindsight, not asking for a roll call vote. I mean, you let the, some of them off the hook. They may, if the Republicans want to be vindictive against other Republicans for for stating their position, that's on the Republican side of the aisle. Why should you try to protect and make it easier for them? Don't believe that that happened, Jim. And by the way, there are five, there are several other members on the floor. We had a, a plan in place for me to give the case that I could share everything that I could share. If the members on the floor wanted to do that, my job was to give the speech of a lifetime, to do everything that I could to make the case of a lifetime, to, move, to prove that the Florida Senate was gonna do the right thing and they didn't. They made that call as well. They chose not to do that. But I wanna also make something very, very clear. That was never going to happen. They were never going to give us that exemption. And their vote was very clear. It was a party line vote of who supported that measure and who did not. That is their stance. Let me ask you this. Where do you think we're going when it comes to the issue of abortion? Because Florida now finds itself in a very interesting position, being that because states like Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi have even more restrictions on abortion, women from those states are now coming to Florida. Florida has now become the place in the South for people to come. It, you know, if you want to say we have more, quote unquote, liberal laws when it comes to abortion compared to those other states, how do you think that's going to play? And what kind of moves do you envision from the legislature next year to make it even more restrictive on abortion? The governor has already made it very, very clear. He plans on further restricting a woman's right to choose. And Florida has become a safe haven really for individuals and women to come and get reproductive health care. Last week, I was with the vice president talking about this very, very issue and how we can work to try to protect a woman's right to choose and have access to these essential health care procedures. The reality again, Jim, there are fewer of us than there are of them. And anything that is introduced all we can do without those numbers is try to stop it and play good offense. I would not be endorsed by Planned Parenthood, Ruth's List, and other organizations that are pro-women, pro-choice, if they didn't believe I was the tough and strong woman that I am to lead the charge at this time. We're doing everything that we can, but without more numbers come November, there is not a whole hell of a lot that we can do to stop the GOP extreme agenda. We've talked a lot about um, one of our colleagues, Ileana Garcia, who argued that the policy relating to the abortion ban and not having the exemption was helpful to survivors of human trafficking because they were no longer profitable to their pimps. This is the mentality that they have. And we can just argue as much as we can, but without those numbers, there's not much we can do. I just want to stay with uh, with your opponent for one second because uh, there was a mailer. I know it wasn't put out by your campaign, but you know it was a group working on your behalf essentially put out a flyer critical of Barbara Sharif for when she was a county commissioner for voting to offer a subsidy, a tax subsidy to the maker of the AK-47, the Kalishnikov company, uh, to relocate into Broward and to open a facility there. Uh, the flyer also included a photo of her holding an assault weapon, and she took great offense of that, saying that that picture misrepresented her. That was actually a picture taken, and I believe it's been confirmed, at a gun buyback program that she was sponsoring, and that she was attempting to get guns off the street 
and the suggestion that that she's promoting guns, especially given that her some mem of her family members have been shot as well, is an outrage and a low blow by by your campaign. How how do you respond to that? Uh, I just want to again be very very clear: the mailer was not made, done by our by by me or my campaign. But I do want to to address some things. I think that. My opponent needs to answer for some of the, the things that the mailer did point out. She seems to be very upset about a photo, but she should be answering questions about why she thought it appropriate to give tax breaks and to incentivize the maker of a Russian war type weapon to come to Broward County. Uh, I would be more concerned about answering and responding to those things than the photo on the mailer. Uh, and so I, I would suggest that maybe those are some of the things that she should be a little bit more concerned about than the use of a photo. Again, not our mailer, not a part of our campaign, but I think that those are some things that she really does need to answer for. 